Minecraft's newest ore, Copper, added in 1.17, has a lot of useful and unique mechanics, and we're going to cover them all in this video. Let's check it out. Now, Copper generates very frequently in Minecraft's overworld, anywhere from Y112 all the way down to Y-16. However, it is most commonly found at Y47 and 48. Something you might not have known is that it generates most frequently in the beach-type biomes, so that would be the stony shore, the beach, or the frozen beach. Also, the Copper generates in larger blobs if you're in the dripstone caves, and also more frequently in the dripstone caves. And it also can spawn in these super massive copper veins. Now a copper vein is not just a small blob of copper like this. A copper vein is this massive network of granite mixed with copper ore and raw copper blocks that you can find somewhat frequently. Now when you find one you'll know it's a copper vein because it will have these blocks of raw copper and it'll also have lots and lots of copper ore mixed in with granite. They're incredibly large, these things can have anywhere from 1 to 15,000 copper ore blocks but some can have even more than that. So if you find one of these you basically have an infinite supply of copper ore. You can even see for instance this one generates over here but it also goes all the way over here, right there. You can even see another one of the raw ore blocks there, and part of it over here. And if we were to dig through this, you'll see there's just more and more copper ore the more we go through here. There's more copper ore, more of this granite. There's kind of this massive tube of granite mixed with copper ore. And if you keep mining through this, you'll find more and more of it. So it'd be a really great idea to, let's say, make yourself a mine centered around one of these large ore veins, as you could have a really nice source of the copper ore there. The bonus blocks of raw copper you find in here too are incredibly nice, because that is literally 9 blocks of raw copper. And don't really ever expect to find the end of these, as mining 15,000 blocks of copper ore in survival can certainly be quite the challenge. Also a great source of granite if you want that. Now when mining either the stone copper ore or the deep slate copper ore, it will drop you 2-5 to five copper ore from it. And what's really crazy is that when you're mining it with Fortune 3, there's a chance of getting up to 20 pieces of copper from it. So let's try that right here. We'll mine this one piece of copper ore here. And it dropped right there four pieces, of course. We'll mine this one over here. Dropped even more. Now the average of this is 7.7 .7 pieces of copper with Fortune 3. But again, it does actually have the chance of dropping 20 raw copper from literally one copper ore. So technically, mining all this with Fortune, mining the raw copper blocks is only slightly more valuable than the standard copper ore there. Once you collect a bit of raw copper, which will always be a bit quicker than you think, as it does drop so much, you can craft it either into some blocks of raw copper just like this, or you can take that raw copper, throw it in a furnace, and smelt it with some sort of fuel to get yourself some copper ingots. And once you have your copper ingots from smelting, then put them in the crafting grid in a 3x3 like this, get yourself some blocks of copper, and you can place those down and build with them if you want. But if you want to maximize the amount of copper you get out of it, simply put it into the stone cutter, select the cut copper here, and one copper block will give you four cut copper. So our four blocks of copper here will give us 16 cut copper. Here's something even crazier. Putting the cut copper either back in the stone cutter or into the crafting table will give us of course double the cut copper, although of course it's now in slabs. And with these you can build a very large amount. And what's really interesting is that you almost get one slab for every copper ingot. As the copper block is made out of nine ingots, the cut copper block you get four of from the one. So you already have about two and a quarter of the copper ingots per uh, cut copper block. And then turning it into a slab, it's about one and a eighth copper ingots for one cut copper slab. And because of the very large drop rates of copper from the blocks there, you can basically build out of cut copper incredibly easily. In fact, it's one of the easiest building blocks to get in the game, even though you'd think something like copper wouldn't be that easy to get. You can also make cut copper in the crafting grid. However, that four times bonus is not there, so it's a complete waste. As you can see, there are four copper blocks give you four copper blocks, so there's no multiplication there of how many you get, whereas in here, you get way more. Once you place down a copper block, it will very, very slowly begin to oxidize, and the oxidization process is influenced by certain things. Now, it does oxidize at the same speed, however, 
If it's within four blocks of any other copper block, the oxidization speed is incredibly slowed. There is some complicated math into how this works. What's important to remember is if you want some copper blocks to oxidize very quickly, and this can be of any single type of the copper, as of course, as we can see right here, there is the copper block, the cut copper, the cut copper slab, and the cut copper stairs, and they all work the same in terms of oxidization. Putting down one, then having one, two, three, four blocks in between each one will basically give you the maximum speed of copper oxidization. Whereas if they're any closer than this, it gets slower. But having them being four blocks apart gives you the best speed. Also, strangely enough, they don't even have to be touching air to oxidize, although in real life, of course, they would, as oxidization is about oxygen coming into contact with copper. So you can even go like that and eventually that would oxidize. Oxidization is quite slow. It's made even slower if the copper blocks touch each other like this. And let's just turn on the random tick speed up to see that happen. And turning it to a thousand here, you can see these spaced out ones almost already completely oxidized, whereas these ones have just barely started to oxidize. These ones are in fact almost completely oxidized now, and these ones have barely started. It is a great example of how having these four blocks apart is really important if you want to get the oxidized copper quickly. Now it makes sense that having a very large copper roof, oxidizing very slowly could be a good thing. But if you do want this oxidized copper, you can have it spaced out. Or if you want a slowly oxidizing copper, simply make a very large roof out of it. Now we're currently at literally 333 times normal random tick speed, so the fact that this is barely oxidized is certainly a example of how incredibly slow copper does actually oxidize. And in my opinion, the fully oxidized copper is probably the most beautiful type, although they're both really, really nice blocks to have a lot of really interesting building opportunities, as they have such a unique texture. Like this texture here just looks so cool, I could imagine making awesome rundown things out of it, and even just these specific colors in it are really not in any other block specifically. Same with the copper block here, there's some really nice oranges you could build with, as long as it's not completely oxidized. Now if your copper has oxidized and you want to get the previous stage of oxidization, simply take an axe of any type and right click on the copper like this. It will clean the copper from one layer of oxidization. Let's try that right now. One, then it goes here, two, three. And the actual names of this are oxidized copper, weathered copper, exposed copper, and normal copper. It won't have a you know word after, it'll just be called copper, or maybe cut copper if that is what it is. And so we can easily scrape off the oxidization just like that, although of course it does take a bit of the axe's durability. Let's say we want to have some sort of a build out of copper that does not continually oxidize. Well, we can actually stop that really simply with some honeycomb, kind of like wax. So if we right click on a piece of copper with honeycomb, it will wax the copper. We actually get the advancement wax on. Right clicking on this with the stone axe will remove the wax and it will get the achievement wax off. So basically, when waxing it just like this, these will permanently be able to not oxidize. In fact, they'll also stay at the oxidization stage that they're at. So let's say that we maybe took this down by one. We want it to stay looking like this. We right click on it with honeycomb. That will stay like that. It'll never become the fully oxidized. It will stay the weathered copper. Also, when breaking a waxed block, you'll see in the name it does say waxed cut copper. You can actually have a really funny item name just like this. It'll say right here, the waxed weathered cut coppers. They definitely have some very funny, rather long names in them. You can also do this in the crafting grid if you want. Simply place your piece of copper in the crafting grid, like let's say this cut copper slab here. Put the honeycomb in it next to it and you can craft it into a waxed slab. So you don't have to go through there manually treating them with wax. You can simply craft them that way, place them down and not have to worry about them in the first place. Now other than the copper blocks and the cut copper, there's two other items that utilize the copper ingot. The first one is the telescope, made with two copper ingot and one amethyst shard. That gives you the spyglass. The spyglass you can right click on it to zoom in, but if you press F1 you can actually get rid of that entire frame and be able to basically zoom in sort of like the Optifine mod just like that, and maybe get a better view of something that's difficult to see from far. And the other one is the lightning rod. This is made with only copper, with three copper ingots in the crafting grid like this. The lightning rod is awesome because when placing it down this will attract lightning. You could place it maybe on top of a building or maybe next to a building so it doesn't get struck by lightning and during a thunderstorm it'll have kind of a static effect on it and it'll get hit by lightning quite frequently in a thunderstorm. It'll also output a redstone signal when it is hit by lightning. You can also have a trident hit it and that'll make lightning be summoned there. So this is a really useful block for that. But its unique shape also makes it something that can be quite utilized for different things which need sort of like a long wiry shape, something like this. That could be really good in different builds as well. 
And of course, the entire line of copper blocks is great for any kind of steampunk build you want, as copper is super used in those kinds of things. And you can see this being used as a sort of pipe looking thing. Also, the lightning rod cannot oxidize, unlike all the different copper blocks, and of course, the telescope can't oxidize either. So, when you place down these lightning rods next to, let's say, copper, it'll start out looking like the same color, but eventually you will have it looking something like this, with the lightning rod on top of green copper, just like that. Also, in previous versions of Minecraft, drowns would drop a gold ingot rarely, but now they can rarely drop copper ingots. So if you want some copper ingots without ever having to smelt them, you could try killing drowns and find them as their rare drop. And that's the end of things you need to know about copper and the end of this video. See ya!